Hi there guys, I hope you are having a good day. Now, boxing has been suspended in all of January in the start of this year. So that means that, once again, Josh Kelly versus David Avanissian for the European welterweight title will have to be rescheduled again. So, no boxing in January of this year. Now, of course, this is because of this new variant that they have found and it's more transmittable. So, there are rising cases in the UK. So, at the moment, it doesn't seem like it's going to be possible to get the testing done to ensure that everyone will have a negative test as opposed to a positive one. Because if too many people go into the camp and one of them tests positive, then another one does, then you have this kind of ripple effect. Then the show has to be cancelled. So I think that the important thing at the moment is that there is no one testing positive and they can ensure that boxing can move on and ensure that no shows are scrapped right before they are about to happen, maybe fight week or something like that. Now, obviously, Football has had trouble with COVID-19 tests, but I mean, they've had multiple positive tests in multiple different teams. So there's been like five players maybe that test positive. So clearly there is rising numbers and whether they social distance or not, it still seems to be being transmitted between the players on and off the pitch, whether they are in training or whether they are on the pitch. So this is following that as well. I mean, boxing is different. With football, it's rolling. It's every week training as well. With boxing, they have one fighter in a training camp with their team around them. There are often other fighters in that training camp also, but it's more of a personal sport. Whereas with football, they roll it on, it keeps going. You can swap out one player and put another one in. You can't do that with boxing so easily, especially if there's, say, a pay-per-view event, or something that's as important as Josh Kelly versus David Avanissian. You can't just say, okay, this fight no longer has Josh Kelly, because one of his team has tested positive, or him himself, or vice versa, one of the members of the opposing team, or David Avanissian himself, has tested positive. So at the moment, the only thing they can see to do is to postpone boxing throughout January. Now, we hope that that doesn't happen through February as well, because that is what happened last year. After March, there wasn't really any fights until, what was it, June or July. So let's hope that that doesn't happen again, and I think that they are well equipped this time compared to last time, because Let's be real, throughout this whole thing, no one's really known what is going on. No one has really known the right approach to take, because it's new. It's a new situation for everyone, and everyone's going through it together. So, ultimately, they did not know then. They do know now a lot more. Testing can be put in place. The kind of isolation that they do, so they test, they go to their rooms, they wait for their test to be positive or negative. Then they join that bubble, they are not allowed to leave, and once everyone is in there, they can't go until the fight is done. So... That's kind of the system that they have built, and that does seem to work. I mean, Eddie Hearn himself, a promoter at Matchroom Boxing, did test positive when he was trying to enter the bubble, but they stacked him up in PPE and shoved him out the back door, and all was well. No one else tested positive in that camp, although maybe Peter Fury did, I'm not entirely sure, but there were certain tests that did come back positive. But it was dealt with according to the guidelines that they have been given, and dealt with extremely well by camps, by the promoters by everyone behind the scenes, British Boxing Board of Control as well. The main factor is the health and safety of the fighters and those in the camp. Now, of course, this doesn't just come down to COVID and boxing itself. It comes down to the fact that there need to be medical professionals there at ringside in case that someone is injured away from COVID. That is very important, and it seems like at the moment, the NHS and healthcare systems seem to be coming overwhelmed with the latest amount of admissions to hospitals and everything like that. So at the moment, the most important thing they can do is to be there as well battling this pandemic. And if they are not there, if they don't have the right kind of medical procedures, then a fighter could get hurt. And the British Boxing and Border Control are not going to allow that to happen anyway. I believe that there are many factors that have gone into this decision to suspend boxing throughout January in the UK by the British Boxing Board of Control. And of course, this does come after lockdown procedures have been put into place in these tiered systems, so it seems like most people are in at tier 4. Some are in tier 3, maybe even tier 2 if they are lucky, but that seems to be the way it's going. And there are so many new cases that it just doesn't seem plausible to do these kind of events. I think that they are suspecting so many positive tests that perhaps it's not permittable to make sure the shows go ahead. So that is the way they are going forwards, and hopefully February, boxing is back. Now, let's just hope that this vaccine and the rollout of it does change things. Of course, they are rolling it out now, and there are different kind of vaccines they have from multiple different sources. So hopefully, 
that does change things going into spring sort of time when the rollout has become more effective. Now, let's not just look at the negatives. Obviously, no boxing in January, which is a pain in the UK. I mean, there will still be shows around the world, I would guess, but in the UK, no boxing. No Josh Kelly versus David Avanissian, which is such a great fight, but obviously we have to wait again. It's been put off a time after time, but hopefully it does still happen and they find a rescheduled date for that to happen. So let's think about the fights that we might get this year and not just focus on the fact that no boxing for January and what that might mean going forwards into February. I think that things will change, it will get better. I think that we will have boxing back in February because I think that we have a mould that there is to follow. So they will be able to get it back a lot quicker than they did last time. That is the good thing as we learn more, as we become more accustomed to this way of living, I think that it will become easier for those to bring it back instead of waiting month after month after month. There is this testing and bubble system they can use to ensure it does come back quicker. So when cases start to fall, that is when a boxing will return because as I said, they can do the testing, they can create a bubble, meaning fighters and their training camps can go in and safely the event will be able to continue. So what are some fights that we will be able to see this year? I think that Tyson Fury versus Anthony Joshua is a big one, one that is being discussed at the moment and one that we are not too sure about due to the situation between Wilder and Fury, their mediation, and Anthony Joshua and his mandatory Alexander Usyk. I don't expect much to change on that front with Anthony Joshua's WBO situation before the mediation has been resolved between the Fury and Wilder because what is Anthony Joshua going to do? Vacate a belt just so Tyson Fury, he might have a fight with him? I mean, Tyson Fury might still have to fight Deontay Wilder. It could be unlikely in the eyes of many, but still, Anthony Joshua is not going to vacate a title just because he believes Fury is going to be available. Then he vacates and Fury is not. Then he's lost the belt for no reason. So I would think that they will wait for that situation to be resolved. Then AJ will make a decision on whether he vacates the WBO or goes and faces Alexander Usyk, dependent upon the resolution between Wilder and Tyson Fury. There is also the rematch between Dillian White and Alexander Povetkin that will likely take place in May sort of time or around spring. So that is a very interesting fight and a very entertaining one that has so much hype behind it because of what happened in the first fight. So that is going to be a great fight to look forward to and hopefully by then things will be a lot better. So that should go ahead. I wouldn't expect that to be affected too much considering it is in May, maybe late April, but it will be around that period of time. There is also the possibility of Billy Joe Saunders getting that Canelo fight, which would be a very good fight, and it is a Brit being in a fight with someone like Canelo, a legend of the sport, four-time world champion in four different weight classes, so that would be a great fight if Billy Joe Saunders can secure that. It would be in the US, so it's not a British fight in the UK, but it is a Brit going over and challenging for that kind of mantle in the US, so that would be an incredible unification fight. And guess what? Amir Khan has once again called out Kell Brook, so boy is that going to be a big fight if they do it in the UK, potentially in the summer, so keep your eyes peeled for that, that could be a very interesting fight considering Amir Khan says he's going to shut Kell Brook's mouth once and for all, so keep your eyes open for that one. And you know what guys, if it doesn't happen now, 10 years down the line, Amir Khan's always going to say, the Kell Brook fight is there. Guys, anyway, make sure you stay positive. Yes, no boxing in January in the UK, but still, boxing will be back before you know it. Guys, anyway, leave your thoughts on this in the comments below, leave a thumbs up, and subscribe if you are new. Thanks guys.